This little film clip accompanies the biogeography virtual field trips. Today we're going to Mount Kira, the first field trip. Mount Kira is really close to the university and it has a surprising variety of vegetation classifications within a short distance so it's really handy to, to show us like different kinds of forests. You can visit parts of Mount Kira yourself as there are quite a few public footpaths. So we're going to go to three sites. The first site is a moist coast, coastal white box forest. It's a simple but disturbed rainforest. The second site is a moist blue gum blackbutt forest, so quite a few different uh, eucalypt species there. It's a, a woodland site on a ridge. <clears throat> and the third site contains a piece of Illawarra escarpment subtropical rainforest. It's actually at the scout camp and is an example of a more complex and rich rainforest. So the first site is, it's on, if you wanted to try and find it, it's on the east side of Clive Bissell Drive. When we um, go to a site, we like to try to get an overview, have a think about uh, what sort of topography there is. Is the site on a slope? This might affect the drainage. How many layers of vegetation can you see? <clears throat> this is something that you can do when you walk anywhere, when you go on a bush walk, thinking about these things. How tall are the trees? What sort of shrub layer is there? Are there herbs? Herbs are, are plants with soft green leaves. And what sort of ground cover is there? Also, you can think about the, sh the amount of shade. Does it feel cooler? These are all characteristics which will affect the, the vegetation growth. How exposed is it? What kind of soil or substrate? That's really important. And what signs of disturbance can you see? You might also like to look for signs of animal life. If we look at the this um, what's underfoot here and move away the leaf litter, you can see there's quite a bit of leaf litter and little pieces of bark and twig. Underneath there's a moist soil with large quantities of organic matter. It's quite dark. Um, as far as the vegetation um, structure, the, the, there are some tall, lots of tall trees here. There's a, a sparse layer of small trees and shrubs and quite a few vines and a sparse ground cover. What about the dominant species? Well, there's um, a white box eucalypt, which has a light gray, gray brown crumbly bark that you can see at the back there. Also prevalent here is the turpentine, which has a brown rugged trunk. There are quite a few trees with spotty trunks, but these are, are not always indicative of a particular species as the spots and mottly characteristic is due to lichens and algae. And there's a few species that support that, including sweet pittosporum and coachwood. It can be quite hard to to actually see the growing leaves up on these trees when they're very tall. So we like to look at a clues for identifying tree species. So if we look at the white box, we have the, the bark, which is light and crumbly. The leaves are very slender and the fruit is quite delicate. If you get a reference book, you'll, you'll see the particular shape as well and you can see if it really is that species. Looking at turpentine, so that's not a, a eucalypt as you can see from the genus there, it's Science syncarpia. It has a very rugged, um, deeply fissured bark and its fruit are re really um, unusual looking. I think they look a bit like spaceships. What about some of the other species here in this site? The ground cover is a bracken, the common bracken. And there's also, um, if you look carefully, some young vines growing. There's lots of lichen on the tree trunks and also some epiphytes like this rock felt fern. Another uh, species that we see a lot of here is the cabbage tree palm. This is a, a young one here. That'll grow quite tall. Something that's quite common in rainforests is this orange thorn. The name makes a bit more sense when it's fruiting because it has orange fruit, but it's got little, quite sharp little prickles as well. 
How about signs of disturbance? Well, Mount Kira is very popular with mountain bike riders, so there's a ma quite major paths running through all these areas, and that will affect, obviously, the, the growth of seedlings. You might also notice here some uh, burnt logs and trunks, which are signs of fire passing through at some point, and perhaps also logging. And finally, up on the side of the road, there are quite a few weeds. If you look around any of these sites, you'll probably see some signs of animal life. Here's an ant nest and also a discarded shell of a cicada larvae.